So welcome to this MASH Masterclass on display boards and thanks for joining me. Um, you have already been told the content of this and it is that we are going to be looking at how you can create display boards um, for children that you work with. We're going to be considering the security and sharing options because obviously anything going online we have to consider online safety so we'll make sure that you're clear on that. We'll take a look at the various ways that you can add work to the display boards and how you can add work, remove work and, and so on with it. And then we'll finish off by having a little bit of time to consider the possibilities and the limit limitations of display boards because they're often used sort of as a precursor to, to, to the two blog tool within Purple Mash which has sort of extended features from it. Why use to, to display board? Well, I use it in my own teaching to showcase work with a wide range of audiences. You can share work with just the single class that you work with. Alternatively, you can set it up to share work with the rest of your year group or your phase if you work have topics or anything in common with other classes. Um, and children from multiple classes could have their work put on a sort of shared display board. It could be a display board for the whole school to showcase the amazing things that happen in your school. And that can even be embedded on your website publicly without anybody needing to ever log into Purple Mash. So pub you can have display boards which are not for children at all. They're just for members of staff with no children invited. Um, or you can have them shared, as I've mentioned already, with parents or the general public. Let's dive out of PowerPoint and dive into Purple Mash and get you get you seeing how these things work. So I'm looking at the moment at a display board, which was one of the display boards that we use as a company when we have um, various competitions for children. This was the um, display board for the two animate under 12s competition that we recently had. And you can see it shows eight pictures on a cork board background at the same time. And if I click onto one of these, um, you will see on here that it opens up the piece of work as though it's in display mode, which means it's just like pressing the play button if there is one in the app. You won't be able to see the individual animation frames. In a piece of coding, if you display coding, you can play the game or watch the code running, but you can't see the blocks of code that are making it happen. So it is very much a display of what's been created rather than seeing the insides of it which if you're considering using these as a portfolio of evidence for computing if you're a computing leader is very much something to to consider because you wouldn't be able to see that code in it and there's better ways of doing that if that's what you're interested in um, okay so let's come out of there and show you how we create them how ch how you can put children's work on them and how children themselves can submit work to them so um, to from the home page in purple mash you'll find everything to do with display boards under the sharing option at the top of the screen here and on here you'll notice that there are three tabs We've got a tab for school display boards, which are things that you can locally create in your school for the classes that you are attached to. Then we've got one called shared blogs, which is to do with two blog. And we have another tab here called global display boards. And these are the display boards that we use as a company for competitions, which are available to everybody who uses Purple Mash. So you're at the moment interested in putting something onto your own school display board. And to do that, if you want to create something, you, you come in here and you click the cog in the upper right corner. What that will do is it'll take you into the, the settings of your display boards. And if you already have display boards, they will be on this list here. I'm seeing a huge list because I work for Purple Mash and sort of all the ones we've ever had are on here. Um, but anything in your school would appear on here as well and you can search it so for example at the top if I wanted to search for something for my Scooby class I can type Scooby into the box open it up and I can now see the settings that I have on my Scooby class board okay however let's make a new board so to make a new board I click the add new display board button here and then I'm presented with the options for it 
And on the options for it here, in the, into the box here at the top, I can just give it a name. So I can, I'm just going to call this um, example, uh, example board. And I can put a description in here and say, and um, for my sample pieces of work in my pretend school. Just to reassure you that these aren't any real children's work being put on here at the moment. Then below that, I have the option to choose an icon. Um, and for my icons, I can choose from the ready-made icons here for display boards, or I can click on the paint palette at the top and be creative. Um, I'm a much better artist than this really when I have time. I could make that to be the icon for my display board, or I can choose files that I already have in my folders, or I can upload things from my PC. So I'm going to upload a picture from my PC. I think I've got some, some pictures in here. Um, where are we? Um, photos. So I could put a picture on here, say, of some telephone boxes, because they're all about communication, and so is this board. I give it a moment or two to do its thing on my slow internet connection today. And there I've got my picture in there. Then below that, I've got some of the security settings. So I can choose to hide information. So if I choose to tick in here and say, hide the pupil name and hide the class name, um, that will prevent any of that information from appearing on the display board. I then have an option here which says only staff can push. Now push is, um, is a word that maybe isn't particularly clear. What it means is only teachers can submit work to the display boards. Now it's okay to leave that blank because and let children submit work to the display boards as I'll show you in a moment. Visible to the public, I can put a tick in here and I'll get some links in a moment to show you how that works. Um, archive is if I want to close a display board down um, so it's not on display for anybody else before, but it keeps it keeps it as an archive. Um, then at the bottom, I have this section that says who can see. So this is my audience. So I can choose to let the whole school see it. Or I can open up classes and select particular groups. So I could say I'll allow the children in Beach class to watch and the children in Willow class. I can only choose from classes that I've been attached to in the Purple Mash admin area. So if I wanted to set up a board and attach it to different classes, I'd have to ask one of the admin users in the school to attach me to that class. You can also open up the group section and um, attach yourself to any, attach the board to any pupil groups. So you could have a display board for a class. Um, you could have a display board for a code club, for example, or a, I've set one up in the school that I work at for um, a reading club and they have a group and they have a display board to share work in there. So those are the options there. If you leave it where nothing is ticked here, then teachers will be able to see the display board, but children won't. OK, so I'll leave this as attached to beach class and I'll impersonate a child in a moment. So I'm now going to save that. And do remember that I've got the hide pupil name and hide class name set on there. So we'll save that and that's now created. And I can go to the display board and click on view display board here to go to it. There's nothing there. So we're going to take a look at how we can pop something onto it. Right, I've got two, there are several ways of putting work onto display boards. Let's have a look to begin with at how children can submit work to the display board if you wish them to. So if I impersonate a child now and create a piece of work very quickly. Um, so from my menu here, I'm going to impersonate a pupil in beach class. And we'll be Aaron because I'm always Aaron. He's at the top of the list. Um, and I'm going to draw my favorite drawing to do when I'm trying to do something quickly, which is a fish. Um, because it's, it's the quickest thing I can do. Um, actually, no, let's take a little bit longer here. I'm going to create a... No, I can't do a mash camp because the microphone is being in use for Teams. So I'm going to do a super quick painting here of a very, very happy fish. Um, and we 
I know that he's happy because he's got a really big smile on his face there. So what I can do now is a child can, um, from here, they could click this share button here. And once they've saved the work, and perhaps called it fish, it opens up the sharing menu. And you'll see down here, a child could now click display board. And any display boards that they have access to, they can click on. So because I've not ticked to say only teachers can push to this board, Aaron could now click where it says example board and click OK. And what now happens is it says your work has been added to the display board, which might make Aaron think that the public at large can see his work. They can't. Let's take a look at why not. The other thing that Aaron could do to put work, submit work to the display board is he, let's pick the bear here. He could select this, choose the three buttons up here, and then choose the to display board option. So let's have both of those pieces of work being submitted to the display board. So two ways for children to submit it. As an adult, you can submit work in the same way as well. Um, right, let's go back to being myself now. So on here, do you notice that I have a notification now? The bell has rung and I have a number one on it. And if I click that notification, it's telling me that some items are waiting for approval in the display board example board. So if I click go to it, well, that's a relief, isn't it? That it's waiting for approval. It's not just gone live straight away. And what that's done is it's taken me to this part of the display board where I've got the switch at the top here, which I have as an adult, and it's automatically switched it to on for me. And it's automatically brought me into the unapproved items section. And you'll notice that these items are grey. I can click on them to select them, and I can hold down control click to multiple select them, to, to, to cherry pick them. And if I think, yes, I like these, I'm, I can see that these were made in, in um, made by Aaron in class three, in just in Heath School. I'm going to click the tick up here to approve these. And what will happen now is they will be published on the live board. So if I now choose the menu at the top to move to approved items, I am seeing the board as it would be viewed by any child in the school who has access to it and has gone to the shared blogs tab. Um, I'm also viewing it as any parents with an external link might see it as well. Um, so, 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 which is great. And if I switch edit off, then it all comes colourful and I can see things and notice there's no name or class on them because I deselected those options. And if I click on it to preview the work, I should get the picture of the nice smiling bear there, which I can print out from here if I want or save a copy of by exporting. Right, um, I can also, there's also a search button on here, which I'll show you in a moment or two. So that's how children can get work onto the board. If you decide that you want to tidy up your board and there's too much on here and you think, oh, that bear's getting a bit tired and old, let's have something fresh on here. You would come to this board in the same way we looked at at the beginning by going through the sharing area at the top of your purple mash screen here. And then from the school display boards here, you could click onto the example display board like so. Then you're looking at it as everybody else is at the moment. It's color, it's loading its previews. You think, oh, I want to freshen it up a bit. So you click into edit mode and you say, do you know what, this one here, the bear, I'll click to select that. And I'm just going to now click the cross at the top to unapprove it. And all that's done is it's moved it from the approved or live section of the board into the unapproved items. These things are still attached to the board, but they're kind of kept in reserve for another day. So you might have, you, know, you, you could potentially have something that you wanted to keep and put on that board each Christmas or at a particular time of year or time of the month or whatever that you'd be able to then re-display um, re 
like so. If you want to remove it from the board altogether, then you select it and click the bin at the top. That doesn't delete the piece of work in Aaron's folder, it just removes it completely from this display board. Okay, so hopefully that's sort of fairly, fairly clear. Um, now, what else do we need to look at? The links, yes. So another thing I've wanted to show you before we do the links is I've got lots of examples of Purple Mash work here in my My Work folder, and I can upload a, a collection of them in one go. So I could, for example, choose from a folder full of work. And don't forget as well, you can drag work around from folder to folder. So if you were wanting to gather a folder full of good examples of work, um, I've created a folder here in my staff section, which I call portfolio. Um, and I just drag things into here. I could drag work into that portfolio one simply by selecting things here, um, like so. And then if I want to pull things from to-dos into, into another file, I just drag, oops, where, where is it? There it is. I'm going to click on it and drag it over that portfolio folder that I created just by clicking add folder up there. And it will now give me the option to move or copy things in there so I can copy them in. And now I'll have a copy of those files here in my portfolio folder as well. There's the life cycle of a plant and so on. So you can pull together examples of work into a folder like this. Um, I do wonder whether some of you are thinking about this as a sort of portfolio of evidence. If you are considering having a portfolio of evidence, rather than a display board, just create a folder here in your staff section, call it portfolio, and every teacher in the school can drag work into this like I've just done. And what they can then do is put, rename the art, uh, rename the file. So they, somebody in here could put, you know, say six four, um, could put Y6 art um, high ability in there. And then at the top here, I could search this say for art and it'll filter it for art. Or I could search it for Y6 or for Y5. Um, I'm not doing a very good job here, am I? Or even say for, for five, anything with a five in it for year five, and it will find um, pieces of work using filtering. So I'd recommend that a portfolio folder in your staff section, any teachers can drag samples of work in there and you can filter it from the top if, if they have renamed it with their year group and so on. Anyway, back to putting lots of work onto display boards. Say I wanted to put all of this on there. I click at the end, click at the beginning, sorry. I hold down my shift button and I click at the end here. I can then deselect anything that I maybe don't want, like I don't really want a word bin in because that's something I'd use in another, another way. Um, I'm not sure I really want the, the close quiz in there, but the rest of it let's have. So I've done that multiple selection using shift and control clicks. 25 items selected, over to the three dots here and it's not letting me put them onto a display board. There's something in here that isn't displayable. I wonder what it is. Um, th this sometimes happens. Let's just try picking a few of them. Sometimes you have to um, sort of look at them quite carefully. So I'm pretty sure all of these will. I think that will. Let's have some of these art on here. Let's have that, that um, thing there as well. Let's try that. Yep, so that, those will all go to, to display board. I wonder if I can add that as well. Yep. I choose my display board and because I'm adding this as a teacher, I can set it as approved and it will automatically go live. Notice children don't get that set as approved. And because this could be children's work, I could copy the comments from my marking onto it as well if I wanted. We click OK and that's all now gone live on there as well. So that's just how I've shown you how children can add pieces of work, how I can add pieces of work in bulk as a teacher. We've looked at the settings of it for security and how to think about that. And um, so we've kept the names off here. It does sometimes take a little while to create the previews on here. It should be busy generating them um, as we speak. Yeah. Um, 
I think I've got too many things running on my computer at once. I've got Teams, I've got the video recording software. Um, it's all going on, so it's all going really slow for me. I think my computer is today. Here we go, it's starting to appear. Um, and then, as we've seen before, we could click onto any of these and see them in play mode or animation or play the computer game or program that is in here. Um, okay. I think that just about covers pretty much everything apart from, of course, the the public links and whatnot. So if I go back into the settings for that board here, but which I have to go to the cog over here, remember, and then within here. So I can search for example in amongst the many and it goes live. So in here for the public settings, I can click on get links. Now, one thing I can do is I could grab this QR code here, which I could copy the image there. I could now email that to, um, by pasting it, I could email that to somebody who produces a school newsletter and they'd be able to paste it onto a school newsletter or paste it on a door. Um, and just for example, now, if you have a phone with you um, and you pop that and, and just open the camera on your phone, um, I might need to make it a little bit bigger, but I'm just holding up my phone now and I've just opened the camera on it um, and it's, it's read that and it's come up with a link to purplemash.com and beneath that I clicked on the link and it is opening and I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the screen now, but on my phone, it has opened up the display board on my iPhone here. You could have that by available for parents. You could have that display board up um, on the school door. You could put it on your class door. You could put it on newsletters. There's lots of ways of giving parents access to that. And parents tend to like things they can access quickly on a phone. So QR codes are a a really nice way of sharing them. You've also got a web address here, which is a public web address, and you could copy that. And I'm gonna go into incognito mode now on my browser, which means I'm not logged in. So any parent would be able to go click on that web address here, and they would be taken to the display board because it's been made public. So I think that's, um, pretty much everything in terms of coverage. You've got the embed code here as well, which if you've got your, if you wanted to embed it on a school website, you would use this and put it into your school's website um, building software. I don't have access to a website to show you an example of that, but um, if, if you're in charge of your school website and you're interested in that, I'm sure that this iframe code here would make sense to you. Right. Um, so I think we've pretty much covered everything that we can with display boards, um, other than just that considerations of the pros and cons of them. So the pros are very much that it's a great way of putting work up there, out there to share with your different audiences that you can select at the bottom here and even make it public. You can turn off the public and stop it being public if you wanted to later. You have control over children being able to submit work to the board and not have it approved straight away. You get the notifications to approve it. So very controllable. You can remove names and classes to, from identifying work if you wanted to. So great for showcasing work. Um, the, perhaps the disadvantages or the restrictions of it um, are that you can't click on code that's displayed in here and see the code within it. Instead, you'd be better off creating a portfolio folder like I showed you earlier. Um, also, you can't really interact with it. You can look at the things on a display board, but not really do anything more than that with them. If you wanted to encourage interaction then uh, and commenting by children, possibly by parents, all very restricted and approved, um, you would be able to create a blog which would look something like this. And this is just a sort of silly test example that I've made. But within the blog, things are set up as posts. Um, and if you click onto a post, then you can have writing around the post here. 
So I've, I've put some media in here where you can play and listen to me talking some nonsense. If we play that, I'd better not press it because I don't know what it is. But then beneath here, children would be able to add comments which teachers would need to improve. So you can get that engagement and interaction with pieces of children's work on if you choose to use to blog. So both fantastic tools, both have their um, sort of pros and cons, and hopefully you're a little bit more aware about them both. If you did decide that you wanted to look at to blog, there are webinar recordings of that on YouTube as well. Well, that brings us to the end of this webinar. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Goodbye.